find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pain for the taste of the blood. Six, six, six. Hey guys, welcome back. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, doing production up here around Western PA and other places, apparently. Also with me on the line, as usual, is Eamon at Eamon2, please. He's a commentator down at Inspire Pro. NWA Inspire Pro. I'm never going to get that straight. Um, I, like, I like that you add. It, it's nice that you add it on the end. Puts a little more. I mean, it's, a, it's important. It's important. It's a big deal for, for you guys down there. Yeah. So I want to make sure that gets that gets connected. Um, it is the South where that still means something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, this is your Indie Mayhem show. Where we talk indie wrestling. We uh, make sure we have an interview a week, and we got a great one here coming up in a minute. Uh, but of course, first, big thanks to uh, Basic Sickness for that intro music and outro. Uh, you can check out free music and videos over at basicsickness.com. Uh, you can also check out more of this and other shows, talking about indie wrestling and other wrestling, all the after shows and uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show proper at uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, you can find uh, the indie mayhem show and all those other shows on itunes stitcher spreaker youtube and video and audio formats please like subscribe comment share them with your friends uh so more people can find out about what we're doing over here especially if you dig it if you hate it well please just do it anyways all right uh you can also drop us a line at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or on the voicemail at 412-206-WMS0 we got a lot of those voicemails over on the wrestling mayhem show so go check that out on the stream uh later on uh you can also check us out at mayhem show on twitter our wrestling mayhem show on facebook google plus and the great facebook group as well a lot of commentary going on there all week long about all kinds of wrestling and wrestling games, actually. And, of course, we're here live every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, or you can find a link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com as well. Eamon, we got a special one tonight. Somebody who is, uh, he's currently a champion, for one thing. He is. He is a very, a very unique champion. Very I would unique say. champion. Uh, he won the Super Indie title, rechristened the Sports Entertainment title. That uh, we'll get into why that is. He is RJ City. Good day, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, I, I see you. Is this is this your general Tuesday night attire with the with the pipe and, uh, and the coffee? Like, is this is this is this how you spend your evenings? Yeah, I get very reflective on Tuesdays for some reason, and this this helps me ponder a lot. Excellent. I'm I'm glad I, I'm glad we caught you on the pondering uh, evening mm -hmm. of the week. That's great. Uh, so I the first question. Uh, well, first of all, what can people expect from RJ City if they see your name on the card? If this is their first time hearing about you? Well, first of all, handsomeness, <laughs> which I which I hope is evident as they're looking at me right now, but also entertainment which is so sorely lacking in wrestling today. You see, you know, legitimate athletics, intensity, passion, dedication, but everybody's bored. So I've taken it upon myself to fill the void and entertain as many people as I can. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We'll get into a little bit more of that, too. Uh, but first, we'd like to start the interview off, uh, you know, take it back. Anybody in indie wrestling are there because they like wrestling, right? Um, what... What was your first kind of experience? What was your earliest kind of uh, 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 discovery of wrestling that you recall that, that was kind of like, uh, this is something I need to uh, follow at least? Do you, are, are these questions written down? Yes, they are. This, this, this is one of our regular questions. We ask Do you have them on one. a piece of paper? I, uh, not paper, it's digital. Okay, delete it. Let's close it. Let's start anew. No one, ca no one cares about what I, oh, yo, I love Bobby Heenan. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> let's start anew. We're done with the wrestling. I know it's the wrestling mayhem, but let's move on to the mayhem. Okay. Ask something you've never asked before. Just hit me with it. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. This is. I, I, I guess. I guess the pro on, uh, proper for that is what is your first, um, what is a moment of mayhem that you can recall um, <laughs> uh, of note uh, in your in your life? I can't. You got to tell me what he said. I can't hear it. Oh, he's not coming across. I'm sorry. Uh, no. He say, "What? What was a moment of mayhem in your life that that you may recall?" 
What was a moment of mayhem in my life? Well, uh, I did an East Coast tour uh, with Hulk Hogan, New Age Outlaws, X-Pac, Scott Steiner, and I spent two weeks in a van with the Nasty Boys. Oh! Um, oh! <laughs> So that was <laughs> that, that was sounds like pretty mayhem. much. They are the definition of of mayhem. They are. We had Jerry Sags on telling some very interesting stories. Mm. Sags is uh, so awesome. Had, He's a really had nice guy. Had, and had Jerry um, Sags stories. Nobs always own. seems to have the meat sweats. <laughs> Wait, what, uh, what was that again? Nobs always seems to have the 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 meat sweats. He's always red in the face and always sweating. He wakes up like that. He's got that wonderful uh, Rob Ford complexion. <laughs> Excellent. So. Uh, so let's get into the, you know, obviously with the IWC, uh, uh, you know, you've renamed the Super Indie Belt, the Sports Entertainment Championship. Yes. Um, and, and maybe, uh, maybe, I don't know if my perspective is, is, is correct on this. Why do you hate indie wrestling? Well, it's not that I, I, I hate indie wrestling. I think that would be a very harsh thing to say. I, I, I'd say I hate wrestling in general. Uh, I don't know what's happened. It's just turned into men yelling. And, and hitting each other, forming each other in the face, and then yelling at each other. We're not barbarians here. We're supposed to be showmen. We're supposed to be performers. You know, add a little gusto, a little chutzpah. And it's so, may I coin the phrase chutzpah-less lately, <laughs> that I just see people sitting on their hands. And and I just feel like it's I'm performing a service that is sorely needed. Now, uh, and uh, like I said, okay, we, you, you kind of, you kind of, cut down our, our usual question of what was your kind of influence uh, going into wrestling. So what's your influence as far as entertainment goes? Jerry Lewis. Uh, the man could do it all. He could dance. He could sing. He could act. He directed. He wrote. And he invented the uh, playback, the director's playback. I'm not sure you knew that. He hooked it up himself in MGM Studio because he was so talented that he was literally ahead of technology. And hopefully, God willing, one day that's a position I'll be in. Uh, so when you when you when you when you're becoming an, a, a pro wrestler, um, you know, uh, did you have to shake some of the indie tendencies? You think when you uh, went through your training? Um, I I just it gets very much different when when I look at a crowd and you know I go, hey, you know, maybe they're not here to just see hammerlocks. Mm -hmm. That's a novel idea. You know, maybe if I talk to them a little bit and. Um, pal around with them they'll have a much better time so i tried it and it turns out oh my god you know they love me so i, I just stuck with what was working <laughs> awesome awesome uh i know here with iwc you're definitely uh connected with justin labar of course known for you know uh, uh wrestle zone chair shot reality uh stuff like that um I, how is it like managers are uh, a rarity it seems these days or at least especially you know on this level uh, typically like it's uh, uh we're somebody's friend that they have coming to the ring with them and it seems very awkward um you know what what is uh, uh do you think that's important uh in, in a, a place like iwc to have a, a manager and what does that bring uh, uh to what people are seeing out there well Back in the day, managers used to be for guys who, who really couldn't talk. They were monsters who didn't really have a good command of the English language. Um, but nowadays, it's difficult with me because I happen to talk. So you can't have two people just yelling and babbling on. It'd be very weird. So you need someone who's a little smarter, a little more resourceful, and someone who compliments my antics. And... Labar was a big fan of my work. I was a big fan of his chair shot thing. Uh, we started talking. You know, we poked each other a couple times on Facebook. And then we met in Pittsburgh and we hit it off. So I'd like to say that we are the Laverne and Shirley of indie wrestling. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, so I uh, go from there. You talked a little bit about uh, indie wrestling. Well, one, one question we typically ask, like, what is the best thing and the worst thing about uh, uh, working with indie wrestling? But whether it be an experience uh, so far or just a general, um, generalness about it. The best thing about it, I would definitely say, is the freedom. Uh, because you're not really aff afforded that any other place you go. Uh, they just kind of say, hey, these 20 minutes are yours. Uh, here's a mic. Uh, there's absolutely no script. Whatever you want to say. And it's mm -hmm. great because it's, it's a lot of power that I could 
be very successful with, like I am, or I could just ruin it completely, which is always the challenge is, you know, not to blow it. Um, but the worst thing, I'd probably say the other wrestlers, the fans, the promoters, the bookers, and the crew. So really, it's just that 20 minutes I get each night. That's absolutely all I'm looking forward to. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, you just uh, actually competed with the Super Indie, of course, uh, recently. Um, go in the distance with it. Uh, you can check that out on DVD. Over making history. Making Make history. Yeah, going, going wall to wall on that one. Um, what's it like being part of a tournament that has that kind of history? This is the 13th one, I believe, this year. Yeah, I think it's uh, hilarious because there's so many great, legendary, iconic names that really couldn't make a difference. Uh, they can try all they want. They can do all the sentons they want, but it's not going to get them anywhere. Uh, I was finally the guy. I mean, there's that saying that if, if you walk, you keep walking into a wall, see if you can find a way around it. And for 12 years, people have been walking into a wall like indie wrestling idiots. And, and I was the guy who finally walked around. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, so uh, going into this week, you got uh, Matt Cross. Is he a new one uh, on your list that you're taking on this weekend? Yes, that's brand new. We've, we've never touched before and we may never touch again, depending on how this goes. <laughs> he might go, wow, that, that RJ Parson showed me up and, and, berated me and belittled me and i don't even want to wrestle so we may just get to the promo part and then he just may leave who knows <laughs> awesome at least they're not in a cage match that night right no uh, that's very barbaric this isn't beyond the thunderdome you know what i mean <laughs> it obscures the spotlight there's a weird shadow on my face through the fencing it's very unprofessional and it's very difficult to film through as well Oh, well, of course. You know, you're a director. You're in the biz. Yes, yes, exactly. You see how unshow businessy cage matches are. They're for, you know, pit bulls and Michael Vick and Fight Club and all that kind of thing. Leave it to those people. You know, get me a nice spotlight, maybe a little psych where I can do my work. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, technology is moving so fast today. I, I can get all my work done with a GoPro. Why don't you strap that damn thing to my head so everyone can see what it's like to be me? I do have a Google Glass available if we can uh, get that hooked up. Oh, fantastic. I because, you know, the best part is I'm never going to get hit in the face. So, you know, it's no, gonna be absolutely safe. not. Absolutely not. Unfortunately, the, the reason I got one when they had the little contest was like, oh, I think I'm going to have it on a in the ring with a referee or something. They actually like gave me the opportunity to buy one. And I was like, yeah, OK. That's, I'm not doing that for yeah. as much as that thing was. No. And the real difficulty is uh, I Labar did some research, and it turns out 87% of all indie referees have two lazy eyes. So if you put the glasses on them, who knows where they'll be looking. Yeah, it's hard to find one you can trust to not break that thing, right? Um, yeah. And, and, and the guy I have at ringside already has a camera, so it doesn't even make sense. So... Um, uh, from that, hey, you know, one thing you tout, uh, I know I hear it every month, uh, you know, you are you are somebody, we were talking about sports entertainment, we talk about your influence, but you're somebody that's actually uh, been on television, as opposed to some of these guys in the business, you know. Um, can you talk about a little bit how that experience has kind of helped you, uh, you know, in the ring, or, or at least before getting in the ring, I guess? Yeah, I was on a, uh, I still am, I'm on a very unique uh, show called Splat a Lot, which is kind of like American Gladiators or, or Wipeout, but for kids. Um, but I guess we all have uh, characters and we shoot things at kids and berate them, which I happen to be good at. And, uh, <laughs> you know, do scenes in between. And uh, it's on in over 120 countries. Um, and it's for families to watch. So the big challenge was to create something that's entertaining for kids and adults and it's live because as the game is happening you know we really only get one take to insult them so i really have to be on my game so i'd say i'm definitely good as you can attest to uh in a live scenario finding exactly where that camera is and knowing how to get the most out of it mm -hmm. what do you prefer first uh what do you prefer most in front of the camera or in front of the live crowd
Uh oh. Um, that's very interesting. You know, I'd say in front of the camera, um, because in the in the live crowd, the the audiences are so, are so weird looking. You see a guy with <laughs> snaggletooth, or you know, it's very popular uh, wrestling fans. They they wear those black shirts. But they wear them so often that you ever see a black shirt that's so old that it's actually void of color and the color isn't black. It's just an absence of color. I think I have a few I of those. I see that and it throws me off. I think I have a few of those from the I'm, 90s. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm sure you do. And I see them and it just, you know, it frightens me. I see, I see a really dirty pair of K-Swiss, you know, and the guy's toe is sticking out and it throws me off my game completely. So I prefer to look at the camera where it's, you know, just me. And uh, and the magic of television. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I, I think I am detecting we have a little bit of a delay here. Um, so uh, I'll kind of keep these straightforward questions as much as I can. Uh, so uh, what what goals do you yes. have uh, career wise here um, uh, coming up? What are the goals? I'm just um, I get very very um, bored very easily which is great because i get to experiment a lot um and just you know i have no passions no dreams i just want to experiment and honestly see how many people i can entertain mm -hmm. and if they get it it's great and if not let me see how many people i can irritate alienate and and disappoint all at the same time i'd love to go to england i think they would not enjoy me over there i think that's a place i would love to be and, uh, you know, onwards, onwards and upwards. I think my face is universally uh, appreciated. So let's see how far it can take. Awesome. Uh, I noticed you're very active on social media, actually partaking in. Uh, uh, I, I didn't think you'd take up the challenge from our boy Riz here on the Wrestling Mayhem show. And, of course, I know somebody else challenged as well to the uh, ALS uh, Ice Bucket Challenge that's been happening recently. Uh, can you speak a little bit to that? You know, when me and Riz first uh, crossed paths, it was the first <laughs> IWC show I ever did, which was actually almost a year ago. So happy anniversary, Riz. Um, <laughs> and he was, it was, it was August and he was wearing a fleece sh uh, sweater and I had no idea who he was. And the pauses between his questions were so long that I had to say something because I was just going to die of, of awkwardness. So I ended up berating him for about 20 minutes, uh, which I felt really bad about because he was just, the whole time he just was just sweating. He wasn't even saying anything. It was just dri dripping down his head. Um, he started to look like uh, Brian Knobs. And, uh, you know, I felt bad about it. I always felt bad about it. But it was nice enough for him to, you know, try to breach the gap and make amends and call me out. So I said, what the hell? I'm going to do the challenge. You can see my challenge on, on YouTube. It's RJ City's ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And whew, it was a big one. Let me tell you, it was refreshing. And I called out uh, James Elmer, my friend, my co-star from Splat A Lot. Robert Maye, who, of course, is uh, Kurgan. Hmm. Uh, very popular actor. I did a movie with him called Monster Brawl. And I took a shot in the dark and I called out Tony Danza. Uh, it's been more than 24 hours. I have not heard from Tony, and quite frankly, I find that a little bossy. I was really hopeful for the Tony Danza one, too. Yeah, well, there's there's another guy who has a Tony Danza uh, fan site who also called him out, and we're banding together, so I urge everyone to tweet Mr. Danza and let him know what the deal is. Because I know Samantha would have done it, Jonathan would have done it, I think Mona did it like 20 years ago, so Tony, get with the program. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, with that, hey, of course, you're going to be here this weekend. Cage Fury IWC here in Elizabeth, PA. People can find more information at IWCWrestling.com. We'll run down the rest of the card, of course, later in the show. Uh, but who needs to know it? Yeah, but yeah, really, you're coming for this, right? I, you don't even need to know. I'm, I am wrestling Matt Cross. I'll be defending my title, but you don't need to know that. The important no. thing is I will be there. I'll be singing. I'll be cutting a promo. I'll be at the merchandise table. You come over. You buy a picture. You buy a shirt. I'll look at you for free. I'll smile at you for free. And I may even insult you. Who knows? It's going to be a great time. <laughs> awesome. Uh, where, what else do you, uh, anything else you want to plug coming up? Where can people find you up uh, online? Um, I'm doing two big Squared Circle shows with Bret Hart at SquaredCircleWrestling.com. What else am I doing? ESW Wrestling in Buffalo. Um, 
what are the other places I do? There's a place called Conflict Wrestling. Um, on Twitter, I'm at RJ City One. That is the number one. Uh, on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash RJ City. Same thing on Instagram. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. And yeah, just tweet the hell out of Tony Danza and let's show him who's boss. That's right. Go uh, Mayhem Nation. Tell Tony Danza to accept the challenge. He has to. All the celebrities are doing it. I mean, if Kerm- I saw Cookie Monster do it earlier today. If Cookie Monster's doing it, Tony Danza has to do it. There's no excuse at this point, right? Jeff Conaway can't do it. May God rest his soul. You know? Andy Kaufman can't do it. I'm sure Judd Hirsch is going to do it at some point. Mary Lou Henner, probably. Christopher Lloyd, obviously. And I'm sure, you know, Rhea Perlman's dropping a bucket on Tony Dan- uh, uh, Danny DeVito at some point, too. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, RJ City. Go check him out. He's a great follow on Twitter. And check him out if he's coming to your area. Check out the DVDs on uh, SorgatronMedia.com with the IWC. And now we're going to... bless you all. <laughs> and now we're going to get some very interesting indie wrestling talk. Yes, indeed. So we're going to talk about some indie wrestling, uh, a couple news bulletins that we want to, uh, to touch on of stuff that's happening uh, directly involving us in the indie wrestling world. The first is, uh, is something that, I mean, involves both of us, I would say, Sword, but also uh, stuff in general. And yet neither of us at all. <laughs> and yeah, yes, but we know this man and, and we know and we've gotten to see his uh, career evolve. Uh, the news broke from Ring of Honor Wrestling uh, that uh, Ray Rowe, uh, who has been recently been tearing it up in Ring of Honor as a part of uh, his uh, tag team War Machine with Hanson. Uh, and he's obviously worked extensively in the Pittsburgh, Ohio area. He's done amazing stuff here in Texas, especially with Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, this past Tuesday, uh, he was involved in a uh, pretty horrific motorcycle accident uh, that uh, basically caused multiple injuries. I believe he has a broken arm, a broken thumb, um, lacerations above his eye. Uh, and basically from all accounts of what happened and, and, and the occurrence, he was struck by a, uh, by a driver, um, and was, una- was unable to, uh, to, uh, uh, react and move out of the way. Um, it, it could have been life threatening. Um, and it was some pretty serious stuff. Um, Ray released some of the, uh, the pictures, uh, of him in the hospital following the, uh, the damage. And yeah, it's, it's pretty terrifying stuff. Um, it's, you know, obviously, you know Ray personally from mm-hmm. you know his work in IWC and all and all the other promotions he worked in that area. And same for me uh, personally, working with him at Inspire, um, I actually got to see Ray Saturday uh, at the NWA BOW event. He was originally scheduled to wrestle ACH. Uh, obviously, that could not happen, um, but he actually got to come out and speak a bit and, and give some words. Uh, and he is immensely thankful. And knowing the kind of guy that he is. Uh, you know, he, he, I believe he went, went, into, he's going into surgery on Friday. Um, and, uh, from his accounts, he's doing everything he can to get back in the ring. Uh, and, and to that, I say, you know, that man is probably one of the hardest working dudes you'll find in indie wrestling. And, Certainly. And he, Certainly. he is a cut above the rest, I think. So, um, yeah, definitely if you can go support Ray Rowe. Um, uh, uh, find him on Twitter. I believe it's at Raymond uh, X Row. Uh, and obviously, I mean, and at this point, I mean, he was on the uh, very unfortunate in that he was pretty much on the peak of his career at this point. You know, wrestling for Ring of Honor, he was competing in top matches for Ring of Honor. Um, so definitely very unfortunate situation. So definitely, uh, if you get the chance, if you haven't already, show him some love because he is he undoubtedly deserves it. So. Definitely, definitely. It was always really cool when we had him up here. A really cool guy. Uh, so we've had him on the show on on the other Mayhem show uh, multiple times. Mm-hmm. Multiple, at least once. Yeah, I've really a couple. I think times. we had him a couple times. Maybe just thinking J Rock. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, wish him the best, and and I'm I'm hoping uh, you know speedy enough that Ring of Honor you know keeps him around. I'm hoping they still have plans for him regardless of this setback. Uh, but mm-hmm. that, that's a guy if it's from the way he's been, if it's from the way he's been getting over, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised that if, that know. guy's, that guy's going to be around for a bit, you know? Uh, so I'm, I'm glad it doesn't sound like it's anything that's going to be career threatening that happened to him. Um, mm-hmm. so a motorcycle accidents can be much, much worse than you're seeing in those pictures. So, yes. uh, speaking of that, uh, train wrecks, um, 
Oh! <laughs> Segway! So, you know, this is fucking karma, man. Um, this is this has to be. We talked about a certain uh, promotion last week, right? Okay. And we've had this con this this we talk about production on the show, right? Mm -hmm. We think that's very important to indies. You know, who the fuck are we? Well, hey, I work in fucking production, so fuck you. Um, I, I work semi in, in the production aspect of the show. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like I, I think I, I I know a little bit of what I'm talking about, and, and it is about your presentation. Uh, as we you know talked with RJ here earlier on this on this episode. Um, and, uh, I, I, I got a call. <laughs> what we're talking about is generations of pro wrestling. We, we talked about last week. We kind of made a little fun of it. Like, what is this show? Why does somebody think this show is going to work? And yet it's, and why is this the show that's the closest to my house that I don't actually have to travel anywhere? Right. Um, but, uh, you know, booking a, a midget versus midget, father versus son for a midget heavyweight championship match, by the way. Which um, is, is, it, is that an oxymoron? It, world championship, maybe? MWC? Maybe. I don't remember. I, I, know, I, can't. I, I don't want to get into the logistics no, of no, no, I'm, I'm not. midgets. I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, they had a Doink the Clown, the future WB Hall of Famer, Doink the Clown. By the mm. way, the real Doink is dead. But, yeah, Let's not confuse you. Out. The real Doink is dead, but for this night, he's not. Also, the Patriot <laughs> is always going to be from your hometown if you see him on a wrestling show. I got swindled that first time when I came as a fan. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's from here? No shit. What? He's from Franklin, PA? No, they say that every town. He's not from Franklin, PA. No, no, no. no he's from your hometown. Um, plus, there's like three of him. So, <laughs> hate to break that up. Um, well, it could be logistically possible. <laughs> I love. I love. There was a certain. I'm sorry. Side note. There was a certain point where somebody was trying to get an interview with him because of a certain involvement with WWF. Because um, we know he had a, a stint there. Um, maybe you don't, because nobody watched WWF then. Good, good, yeah. Oh, that was another guy. Okay. No, someone else. <laughs> someone who the hell was on the on the, on the hangout? Um, yeah, yeah. um, and we went to the show, and the person that wanted to get the interview went, and then realized it wasn't the patriot he was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is so bad. Anytime you see Don't a you hate when that anytime happens. you see a mask gimmick, especially like something like a patriot or the doink the clown. Don't get swindled on this thing, especially if they're doing they're virgiling you in like twenty dollar uh, uh, autographs or something like that. I was surprised Doink wasn't out trying to sell photos or something. You know how is that? How is fake Doink not merching on the thirty people in the crowd? You know he probably would have made a couple bucks. Anyways, anyways, um, anyways. But no, like I said, thirty people in the crowd. It was at this this uh restaurant i've never been to but i've driven past a hundred times apparently uh in my in my 10 years of being uh here uh and uh i i don't know how to explain it. i gave you a little bit off it was it was it was just kind of sad I, there's no way to make it look good on video as one camera i well how did i get there i got a call from a friend of the show and if it wasn't a friend of the show that i you know, like and support um, and their endeavors, friends of the show, actually. One we have not interviewed, but, uh, but I consider him a friend of the show because he helps me out uh, greatly with some uh, production stuff uh, and has for, for several years. Um, mm. uh, but I was like, you know what? You know, they, they're, they're trying to help these guys and their video and their audio. I, I'm like, I couldn't help with the audio side of things. I can't help with the system. Uh, I could maybe duct tape something. I have an amplifier randomly over there uh, that I've done for like a graduation party or something. But I'm like, I can solve one problem tonight. <laughs> and this is the problem we're going to solve. <laughs> uh, so I came and 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 um, uh, money was a question mark and money did not happen. And I have footage that uh, if I don't hear anything in a couple of weeks, I think I'm going to do something fun with, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It, it's just... I don't know if it's just because it's on a Steelers night. It was the promotion not great. We saw what the online promotion was. I don't know how much flyering gets you. I don't know, you know, 
I'm seeing flyers up here for the show in Elizabeth. I don't know how, how many people that's going to draw in. You know, nobody's watching TNA. I think that's pretty much a foregone conclusion right now. So that's not a thing uh, for the people coming in for that show coming up uh, that are at a side note. I always see posters for wrestling shows at bus stops. If your show isn't local and they're at a bus stop, what are the chances they got a car to drive your show? Just side side yeah. side thing. Yeah, just a, just an observation. I, I, I don't know the busing systems of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's you know and maybe possible. We could you, you it could be a chance of that. Not for the not for I'm not for all the way out in Elizabeth. I'll tell you that much. I'm bargaining right now. So you're, 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 <laughs> no, not for this one. It's not that great. They cut back the systems. Come on, um, people can't even get to their jobs. Come on. Anyways, um, I, geez, I, okay, here, the, okay, uh, I am stammering because I, I, I only want to say so much here on, on the show, but, um, I'm definitely not pleased with, with how the show went, how, what, you know, what happened with the show. Uh, the show itself was, you know, your average thing. I thought the, the midget, the midget match was great. Uh, Doink the Clown was Doink the Clown, which is entertaining. Lord Zoltan was Lord Zoltan, which is, uh, I love it if I'm in the mood for it. Can I can I put it that way? Um, you know, a lot of <laughs> a lot of jokes, a lot of a lot of gags in the ring. You know, a lot of the uh, he did around the world. And uh, have you ever seen? You've been I think shows like this, uh, moving the ring rope from side to side and making the the, the other guys have to move and, and annoying the crap out of them. He went all the way around the ring. So. Hmm. Um, so which could, took a good like five minutes out of the match, right? Uh, you know, all, all that stuff that I expect to see on, on a show like that, you know, which is fine. You know, um, they do it in KS, KSWA from what I understand and they draw a crazy crowd and that's great. And I actually want to get to one of those shows. Um, but, uh, this was what it was. And, and, and that idea that this could have been somebody's first, uh, indie show, you know, yeah. and that's what makes me sad about this show. You know, it, it makes me sad that, that. You know, you know, even if WWE doing the clown, da 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 da, and then um, these guys with the major championship belt and and all that stuff, you know, I got to see these guys and and that whole idea. And, and I always heard this in, while I was in the crowd at IWC. We see Samoa Joe at an IWC show. I'm like, man, he's really gone downhill if he's here, right? It's like, no, he's active on TNA. You don't, you're definitely not paying attention, right? And they're not. These are like casual fans that like saw somebody on the card they dug, right? Uh, or the legend shows. You're like, oh, these guys are all downhill, over the hill from WWE. And then you see these guys in front of 30 people. And that just that just accents your problem and your thoughts on that. And again, could be your first show. Thankfully, not very many. But are they really going to come back? You know? Because there's so few people in the crowd that it's just kind of awkward at that yeah. point. Uh, for the people in the crowd, I feel. Other than the one guy that kept coming over anytime Doink or Zoltan was, I think he just hated clowns and just kept <laughs> yelling at them. Um, that was kind of entertaining. But I don't know. It's it's you know, thankfully we don't have too many shows like this. I, I really think uh, for whatever people joke about the numbers and stuff, uh, you know, guys like RWA and IWC and even PWX. Um, run anytime I see a picture of the crowd. There's got to be a hundred people in those seats, right? Um, and that's right. <laughs> that's like that's the good starting point, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Anything up from there is great. Uh, you know, we talk about the RWA, you know, having their big show of crazy ass three hundred people they packed in that place. Um, they're mm -hmm. really, really trying with IWC to to pack four hundred. Not really pack, because it's, it's an open court, so it's not really going to be real. <laughs> you know squeezed in there but they want 400 people at the court time you know uh and that's that's really cool and i know they started that if anybody's suspecting that they, they started that at hashtag 400 before 300 people packed in rwa um so and i think it's a really good goal or it's the goal they need to break even i don't know i don't know the logistics of it uh yeah. but they, they have something pretty cool uh work together we'll get into it in a second um but i don't know I don't know. So that was my experience over the weekend. Uh, generations of pro wrestling. I don't know if when uh, I don't know if maybe it was a twenty dollar ticket. I know I would have rather driven down personally. I would have rather driven down, paid fifteen dollars for whatever ticket I got for TNA at a ball field in Washington, PA, which is an hour away, rather than pay twenty dollars and go ten minutes down the road. Yeah, as a fan, completely as a fan, you know. Um, it doesn't make sense, and I don't know who you're going to convince otherwise. 
30 people, obviously. Yeah. But five of them knew some of the wrestlers, at least. So, yeah. Anyways, and I know you've had this experience. You said you've come across a lot of these shows in your area. Yeah, and I think people, I think, honestly, you go anywhere in the, in the continental United States and you'll find a show like this. Um, it's it's interesting. We talk a lot about the good about indie wrestling and what it, but the, I think people don't necessarily understand what it takes to promote a good indie wrestling show and mm. to create a good indie wrestling company. And, and obviously, me and Sober are on the production end of things, so we don't obviously know all the intricacies of no, no, how that no. happens. But I think you can see some of the things that are important when it comes to that aspect as far as promoting. <laughs> And, well, we're, and, de- we're definitely armchair promoting at this point. Yes. I mean, promoting is an art. There is a way that you promote. Um, you know, I, I can, I'm confident enough in saying that Inspire for Wrestling does a lot more than just flyering mm-hmm. uh, to get people to come to their shows. Um, we do a lot of, a lot of different stuff. Um, and I would say IWC and RWA do, you know, similar things as well. Um, I, I think... It, it goes back to like what we said before. It's like as that that show that you went to is just as much as indie wrestling as anything else. Yes. And the problem is people will watch and th- and have a perception of independent wrestling. Um, bec- and you know we're not making the big bucks, but independent wrestling can be good. It can be it can be better than that. Um, if, if that's the best way I can put it. Um, but yeah, I I think. It, and that's everywhere. That stuff really is everywhere. I've been to multiple Texas wrestling shows that are like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's sad, but you hope that either the, the, either the company will get better or people within that company will find other places to work or, mm-hmm. or, or whichever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I, I, it's, it's a difficult situation, I would say. Certainly. Well, let's get into some more positive wrestling. Yes, because there's wrestling this weekend. There's plenty so. going on this weekend, for sure. Um, so. um, for you in particular, I mean, we talked with uh, RJ City. Mm-hmm. Uh, IWC is this weekend, and it's one of their one of their bigger events. Yes, this is definitely one of those. Like, I, so, I feel so blessed that I am involved with RWA and IWC because they're uh, you know, RWA is obviously coming up, I think, um, and IWC is usually the bar. I think in the area, I've always had thought as a fan. Think so on this end, and and just getting it out there. Uh, but their big Cage Fury show is this weekend. This is one of their big ones of the year. Alice, one of those with the logo at the top of the sh- of of the page. So it's one of the big four that they do. Um, of course, friend of the show. Uh, we did say uh, Jimmy DeMarco was supposed to be on tonight, but he had a unfortunately a, a conflict that came up. Uh, a couple of days ago. So thanks, RJ City, for coming on such short notice, too. Uh, mm-hmm. But they are going to have a War Games match three on three uh, with Team Big League, Jimmy DeMarco, and Vale, another uh, uh, future friend of the show, actually. The other cage match is going to be Facade, Sammy Guerva, Guevara, sorry. It's, I, I always miss that up. <laughs> Andrew Palace and Matt Tavern. Tavern? Sorry, Taven. Man, Taven. it's too late. Uh, from Ring of Honor. So Ring of Honor being represented, as well as TNA, DJ Zima, Ion taking on. Dalton Castle for the uh, heavyweight title. And like we mm-hmm. talk about, RJ City, Matt Cross, Super Indie, or Sports Entertainment, depending if you're talking to RJ or not. And other great guys, friends of the show, like Chess Flexor uh, in six man tag action, Justin Idol, another friend of the show, uh, Bobby, Bobby Shields, another friend of the show uh, in there. Uh, and Mark Madden's going to be on there. And I have I got some slack today because I'm like, you know, Mark Madden's right about this thing over here. <laughs> guys. Mark Madden is not the Mark Madden on the radio or WCW. I want. Can we? I'm, I'm sure he's a fine can we, fellow. Can we lift the blind on this thing? Um, and I'm not even talking about you, you meet him in person or anything like that, which he's fantastic. I'm sure if you're a dick, you'll be a dick back. He's really good at that. Um, but his columns over on WrestleZone? Was it WrestleZone? I think they might be some on the trip too. But anytime mm-hmm. I see him pop up, I try to read them uh, whenever I see him on Twitter. Uh, they're good reads, you know, typically about the mainstream wrestling, of course. Um, but they're, I've never been disappointed with uh, Mark Madden thing. You know, they're very reasoned, 
And you don't get a lot of that in pro wrestling writing. I'll tell you that much. Um, so uh, I definitely recommend that. But he'll be there, and he's actually going to be doing a pre-show Q&A session. Uh, I got to uh, sit in on, on a little bit of that last last uh, uh, year when they did this. I think at Cage Fury they did it. Maybe as or as winner takes all. I can't recall. Either or. Um, well, and he's yeah. got some <laughs> he He will tell you stories. He does not care. Uh, we do not film these, so he does not care what stories he tells. And I've heard some of the stories, like, 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 I've heard some of the stories, like, off camera, you know, that he's told. And they got told in these mm-hmm. sessions, okay? I- I'm telling you that much, you know. Once in a while, maybe a name stricken from the record, but uh, definitely worthwhile if you want to check that out if you're in the Pittsburgh area here. Um, IWCWrestling.com, of course. I'll be there. The crew will be there. We'll be selling DVDs there. Uh, and of course, it'll be up on digital download, I'm sure, within the week. Uh, I've been kind of nutty about getting those together real quick for digital. DVDs take forever because I have to depend on somebody for they artwork, Eamon. Is that another thing we can talk about? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Sorry. No, no. The guys are great. I know they're busy. And, and you know, indie wrestling is not everybody's first priority that works in indie wrestling, unfortunately. Um, so. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go any further into it, but no, no, Jesse and Alex do great work and they get in when they can get it in, you know? So mm-hmm. we've got to make a living. Andy wrestling, ain't it? So now they need. <laughs> what do you got it going on? You got anything? There is a couple of events happening this weekend that I think you should check out. Uh, Sorg, uh, do you like good wrestling that it's also free wrestling? What? Yeah, that so usually means it's good rest or it's free wrestling, but I expect the show like I saw this weekend. Possibly, but instead you can get uh, the the stars of wrestling is fun. I guess uh, this time around August twenty second, wrestling is free. Uh, that nice. will be uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania, at the First Energy Stadium. Uh, the uh, show, the, the wrestling event that they're doing, uh, immediately follows the Fighting Phillies. Uh, excuse me, the Fighting Phils ball game. Uh, that's happening at the uh, First Energy Stadium. So immediately following that uh, is the event, and the uh, wrestling event is 100% free. Uh, you will only need to uh, get a ticket if you want to see the actual ball game beforehand. Uh, but a lot of good matches on that show. Uh, it's main evented, of course, because if you're at a wrestling event at a baseball field, the main event obviously has to involve <laughs> Dasher Hatfield uh, yes. against Juan Francisco de Coronado. Um, and there's a lot of good uh, Wrestling is Fun stars on that event. Uh, if you want more information, uh, you can go to WrestlingIsFun.org and go support those guys over there. Uh, obviously, the extension of Chikar Pro Wrestling, and uh, they do some really, really great stuff. Um, so definitely go support them. Hey, uh, all- go ahead. So, or go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Your thing's more important. Well, I, well, I was going to go on to the next event, but you feel, feel free to. No, I'm still looking up the thing, so you go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, Ring of Honor uh, has a big weekend of events this weekend as well. Uh, on the 22nd and the 23rd, they will be in Milwaukee and Chicago uh, for their Death Before Dishonor 12 weekend. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff happening from there. Uh, obviously, Ring of Honor champion Michael Elgin has a couple defenses of that championship belt. Uh, the Young Bucks will be there. Uh, bad influence. Uh, current IWGP heavyweight champion AJ Styles. Uh, and 10 of stars for Ring of Honor. Uh, so... Ring of Honor, like I've mentioned many times before, I think is really starting to get back in the groove of things. Uh, so there's no better time than any uh, to go support them. So if you'd like more information, go to ROHWrestling.com and, and go check them out. Uh, and if obviously you can't go to those events, uh, go find them on your TV and watch them there. On the TV. Doing- on the TV, because they're doing some good stuff there as well. So Awesome. Hey, we talked about last week real quick. Uh, American Revolution Wrestling, they were having that big brawl in the ballpark on the other mm. side of Cleveland uh, with Scott Hall, Xbox Too Cool. Uh, there's a poster there for you guys on video. Uh, I did see a video uh, from Facade, friend of the show. Facade, uh, uh, you know, got to see a little bit of the crowd. Looks like they had a pretty good crowd out there. Um, you know, Obviously, you're not going to fill a bell park. I think any wrestling show. Even a small ballpark, like a small single-A ballpark, like, you know, TNA has been doing and did here uh, in the area. But mm-hmm. uh, but no, it was good to see that they had a good turnout. Because I, I hadn't heard of this company before. I wasn't, you know, sure with the lineup and everything. But uh, they definitely drew with the big guys, and I really hope they delivered. Obviously, guys like Facade were there. Um, Justice is another great guy. Uh, you know, WWE Developmental, actually, with, with uh, Matt Justice for a bit. 
Um, so, uh, you know, good talents out there. I hope they really deliver and I hope they really kind of delivered on that promise that, you know, that, you know, we found with indie wrestling, uh, with, you know, especially with IWC where you come for the big name, but hopefully you'll come back for the other guys. You right. Know? Uh, so good, good hearing that they did well out there. Uh, AM rev wrestling.com. If you want to find out, uh, more, they don't have any new events up or anything like that. So Amen. I think I've had enough wrestling. I think I have enough podcasting for one day. There's Ooh. a lot of maybe at some point we can time. move this show a little earlier in the day. Uh, you get you, you really nice. get the. Uh, I feel like David Letterman where he's leaning back in his chair because he's at the end of the show and it's late night. And <laughs> who gives a crap? You know. Yeah, just relax. Point. This, is, this just ends with you and me hanging out. I love, love it. I love it, Sorg. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that's the uh, ending game show for this week. Uh, if all goes well, I've actually confirmed the guest for next week. Ooh. So I should be happy that I don't, that I don't uh, tell him so last minute. Uh, if everything goes uh, the way I had planned, uh, next week we'll actually be having a, a Texas resident wrestling star on the show. One Jiglo James Johnson. And I am excited to have him on. <gasps> yes! <because>. Alliteration! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, and 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 he is a character uh, of of all sorts. So I I'm excited to have him on. So yeah, that will be for Indie Mayhem Show number thirty four, which will be next week. Sorry, but sir, where can they find us? Guys, we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find us on Facebook, on Google Plus, and the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, where a lot of conversation is happening. At Mayhem Show on the Twitters. You can find this, the Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please let us know what you think of the show and tell your friends if you're really enjoying it. Even if it's in every other week. Some of you might be from Pittsburgh. Some of you might be Texas. We understand. We want all you guys. We want you to experience into your wrestling any way you can. And you can also drop us a line to goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com with any of your thoughts on the show. Guests, prospective guests, past guests, anything, questions, whatever. 412-206-WMS0 is the voice version of how you do that. You can get all that at the website as well. And you join here live every Tuesday, 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, Central Time, 10 p.m., by the way. Uh, basic Sickness, thanks to him. Great music. BasicSickness.com always brings us in with energy and out feeling good uh so with that for my boy aemon at aemon two please i'm at sorgatron you better be a support in that indie wrestling never said i was a gangster or thug when i'm an animal peanut for the taste of the boy six 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 you're not